Hi, this is Tzvi, livingworldgear.com and I wanted to share with you now about the meaning of the Hebrew words for afflict our souls. We are talking about the Day of Atonement. I recorded uh, another video speaking about the meaning of Yom Kippurim from the Hebrew, the Day of Atonement. And uh, now I wanted to speak specifically about something that we are commanded to do on this day, this appointed time of our Creator, uh, spoken of in Leviticus 23. It says that we have to afflict our souls. And uh, the main reason why I decided to make this video is because I have seen that many people that are trying to study the Bible for themselves try to disassociate from anything that has to do with tradi traditions, specifically Jewish traditions. And um, there is a tradition that in this day uh, we are to fast. And um, people that want to disassociate from anything that has to do with Judaism will say that it doesn't say that we need to fast on this day. And um, I believe that this is uh, very important because uh, whether we choose to fast or not, uh, we are really uh, putting into play, we are putting in the line uh, the commandment and whether we fulfill it or we don't. So uh, I wanted to very briefly go into the words for afflict and soul to understand a little more of the context uh, of what are we to do, what are we commanded to do uh, in Yom Kippurim, in the Day of Atonement. So in Leviticus 23 it says that on the tenth day of the seventh month we are to afflict our soul. In Hebrew it says ve'initem et nafshotechem. Ve'initem, that means and you shall afflict. Uh, nafshotechem is the plural of the word nefesh that is translated as soul. So first of all I wanted to um, go into the correlation between afflicting and fasting. And in order to do that, instead of staying uh, only in Leviticus 23 and the commandment uh, itself, I want to go to a number of verses that will show this link. The first of them is Psalm 35:13. It says, but as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returning to mine own bo bosom. In Hebrew it says, Va'ani b'chalotam levushi sak initi, there is the word, initi, afflicted, batzom, Nafshi. Batzom means with fasting. Uh, that is a word that does not appear in Leviticus 23. And then nafshi, my nefesh, is translated as my soul. So we're going to go in a little bit to see what nefesh means. Because in this verse, David is saying that he afflicted his nefesh with a fast, with fasting. So, nefesh is clearly not soul, since we cannot afflict our soul with fasting. Fasting does something to our body uh, and not our soul. Fasting has a direct correlation with our nefesh. So, here what I'm pointing out is I afflicted my soul with fasting. So we have these two key words that appear in Leviticus 23, that is to afflict the soul or to afflict the nephesh. And David himself says that he afflicted his nephesh with fasting. Again, David in Psalm 69:10, he says, When I wept, 
and chasten my soul with fasting that was to my reproach again in the Hebrew va evke batzom nafshi vatehi la harafot li when I wept with fast my nefesh reproached okay so the relation between nefesh and affliction with fasting this this uh, next passage is one of the most meaningful ones for Yom Kippur uh, is read in the synagogues uh, in the prayer books is in Isaiah 58 I'm gonna read verse 5 um, the whole of Isaiah 58 is read and uh, indeed it, Isaiah is clearly speaking about Yom Kippur some people mistakenly uh, believe that this passage is speaking about the Shabbat because he's talking about my holy day and not to do your own pleasure and then they say that Shabbat we're not supposed to do anything that we enjoy on the Shabbat it's not talking about that it's talking about Yom Kippur if you read the whole chapter in context I'm going to read now just verse 5 and it says is it such a fast that I have chosen the Almighty is speaking here. He chose a fast. So, what fast did he choose? Because there is only one fast spoken of in the scriptures. So, is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Yom Anot Adam Nafsho A day of Anot, Ana, the same word to afflict. A a man, Adam, his nefesh? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast and an acceptable day to Jehovah? So, this is speaking again. The relationship between Tzom, that is fast, with I need them at a nefesh. A afflict your soul in Ezra chapter 8 verse 21 it says then I proclaimed a fast there at the river river of Ahava that we might afflict ourselves before our God in Hebrew Vaikra Sham Tzom I proclaim there a Tzom a fast that's the word that does not appear in Leviticus 23 but again it connects Lehitanot Lifnei Eloheinu Lehitanot is the reflexive form of to afflict oneself but in the root of it you see the Ein Non this is the reflexive form, leita not, but again, to afflict yourself. How? With fasting. Now, there are many things that uh, in Jewish tradition, Jewish people will not do on Yom Kippur, and all of them have to do with the body. An affliction or setting yourself at a low standard uh, in the physical dimension some of the things that Jewish people will not do on this day is eating or drinking wearing leather footwear bathing and washing applying ointment lotions or creams and engaging in any form of spousal intimacy so we see how all these things have to do with the body why do they have to do with the body? because of the meaning of the word nefesh that is translated as soul now we have to understand that the word soul in modern English has to do with that divine essence that outlasts the body after we die is our soul now that's not what in the Bible is the soul what we call in modern English soul 
in the Hebrew would be a neshama. Neshama is the divine breath that the Almighty breathed breath into Adam and he became then a living nephesh because of that breath of life he became a living nephesh okay so we have the two words here that are related neshama and nephesh but they are not the same throughout the hebrew bible we will see how nephesh is mostly related to what we would call life self person what has to do with what we can touch our life now a few examples of those are Psalm 107 verse 9 for he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness the hungry soul it could be a poetic form of saying soul but it's really talking about your physical uh, entity he satisfies the longing nephesh and he feels the hungry nephesh when you feel hungry he provides food for you so you are filling up your nephesh in uh, psalm 27 7 the full soul loads the honeycomb but to the hungry soul every bitter thing is sweet again nefesh sve'a the full soul tavus nofet will uh, despise or load the honeycomb the nefesh raeva kol mar matok but the hungry soul for the hungry soul every bitter thing is sweet okay what what do we taste with with our mouth our body our nephesh in uh, isaiah 56 11 yeah they are greedy dogs which can never have enough and they are shepherds that cannot understand they all look to their own way every one for his gain from his quarter uh, the greedy dogs in this case the word greedy it says the uh, nefesh the dogs have a like a forceful uh, nefesh that is translated as greed so it's clearly in relationship with the body and lastly but not least uh, in proverbs 23 2 it says and put a knife to your throat if you be a man given to appetite put a knife to your throat that means that this is not something really good that you want to have if you be a man given to nefesh if you are a man given to nefesh, nefesh is not something spiritual, but is something physical. Um, even when it says uh, there were so many persons here, and the count of the sons of Israel were so many persons, that word for persons is nefesh, nefashot in the plural. So nefesh is your bodily life yourself your person so now if we go back to the commandment for Yom Kippurim in Leviticus 23 it says that we are to afflict our nefesh we are to afflict our nefesh and another uh, word another correlation that I want to bring to the table of the word to afflict that is very important is that the word or the root verb of to afflict anna is one and the same in the hebrew as the word to humble to set yourself lower moses was the most 
humble, anav, ainun vav, man over the faith of the earth. It, the Almighty it brought us to the wilderness and it kept us there for 40 years that he may humble us the same root in Deuteronomy. So now we have a more comprehensive or holistic understanding of what to afflict our soul means. It's not something vague uh, in the Bible. It's something that any Hebrew speaker, especially back at the time when Moses uh, wrote down this commandment, would have understood. To afflict your nefesh, va'initem et nafshotechem, has to do with to humble, to afflict our self. That would be the most simple way I can put it. So how do we afflict ourselves? Every day we do everything to fulfill our own bodily desires. We eat and drink and wash ourselves and do things that fulfill ourselves because that is an innate quality of the human being. You want to do things for yourself to make you feel good. There is one day out of the year, Yom HaKippurim, that the Almighty says, this day is not about you. This day out of the year is the day that you are going to bring to remembrance your transgressions and your iniquities and I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to cover over them with the blood of the sacrifice. So if you want a more understanding on Yom Kippurim, I have another video uh, that speaks about the Hebrew meaning of Yom Kippurim, the Day of Atonement, and uh, I hope that this teaching will help you get closer to the Creator, get a deeper understanding um, and in your experience, because I do not believe in intellectual knowledge for the sake of intellectual knowledge. I believe that the Bible is a book for self-development, self-improvement, and uh, I hope that uh, this is beneficial to you. Shalom.